half in the bag. My diaper's full. Well, Mike, we're back at Mr. Plinkett's house. Finally, it's been a while. I'm sure a crazy adventure will drop into our laps at any moment. So do you want to talk about some movies? Sure, Jay. His fist closed around the serpent's eye. Strange and eternal. Mandy breaks new ground by being the first film ever to be shot entirely on location inside of Satan's butthole. In the film, Nicolas Cage acts. Mike, what did you think of Mandy? Uh, well, this film was interesting, Jay. Thank you for making me watch it. Is that sarcasm? Uh, I mean, this film was no tag. Um, which, which Is that I, a movie? Which, which I thought was one of the best films of the year. Um, Is that sarcasm? And so it has a lot to live up to. <laughs> No, um, I, I liked this film a lot. Okay. I didn't love it because obviously, you know, it's, it's a little thin on story, but, you know, I'm able to turn that part of my brain off for a while and just enjoy the incredible, incredible visuals and cinematography and amazing, like, creativity mm. in, in just what you're seeing. Yeah. When you're just like, what? Like... David Lynch and Jodorowsky kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Where you're just like, mm, why is there a planet there? I don't care anymore. <laughs> you know, visually, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, but, but as far as influences go, it, it seems like a lot of it comes from like trashy B movies. Well, there's the the '70s grindhouse kind of like there's style. Like, there's I like could, Hellraiser demons. There's, and there's chainsaw a whole bunch fights of yes. And, yeah. When there was a when I was like, oh yeah, now 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 a chainsaw fight is happening. I mean, there are parts where I laughed out loud. Mm -hmm. There were parts that were like disturbing. Uh, there were parts where I was like, it kind of takes a, a bizarre like shift. Like when Nicolas Cage goes and talks to the guy who was in Predator. Oh yeah, Bill Duke, he's still alive. Uh, he's still alive. Um, <laughs> who, whose face is just like a, a permanently scarred in my brain in terror. Because he, he's the guy who gets like cut in half or something in Predator, right? Something yeah. horrible happens to him in Predator. I don't even remember. I thought you were going to say your, the close-ups of his face in this horrified you. So what are you going to do with that thing? I'm going hunting. So what you hunting? It's crazy evil. Uh, Nicolas Cage and Lady, uh, his, his love. The titular Mandy. Titular Mandy uh, live in a magical house in the woods. Far away from everybody else. Yes. They're, he, they're, they're, they're isolated. They don't, they're happy that way. So it's a little storybook. Yeah. A little, very, very, uh, very simple. Um, he, right next to, as she mentions at one point, Crystal Lake. Yes, that, like, that's, that's a little too obvious of a reference. A little but. too obvious. Um, a cult of Jesus freaks on LSD show up, <laughs> drive by her, and their cult leader, Jeremiah, becomes enamored with Mandy and wants her in his cult or to procreate with her. Who the fuck knows? Uh, he wants that, to be loved. It, that's, that's a running theme of the movie is, okay. is love, um, yeah. which we can get into. But I think he sees her because, yeah, they drive past her on the side of the road. The scene is bathed in red. It looks gorgeous. But... She, that actress, I, I had to look her up afterwards because I was like, have I seen her before? I guess she was in Birdman, but I haven't seen that since the theater. I don't remember. Um, but she stood out to me. I mean, she's the title character. And she reminded me a lot of uh, Shelley Duvall. That sort of like, like sad. Uh, Doe-eyed. Yes, very vulnerable. And I think that's why the cult leader kind of latches onto her is because she looks like she has like one eye is fucked up and she's got like a scar, some sort of backstory that we don't, isn't spelled out in the movie, but this idea that, like, because he is, like, an egomaniac, you know, and he just wants love, and that's why he's the leader of this cult. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so I think that's sort of, like, yeah, him kind of latching onto her, like, I can take advantage of this, of this this damaged person. I, I just assumed uh, uh, it was the director's girlfriend <laughs> or wife. It, it felt, it had a little Sherry Moon zombie kind of feel to it, like. Mm, I didn't get that at all. I, I thought she was, I thought she was great in those movies. She didn't say anything. <laughs> no, no, it's it's the it's the perfect casting because she works visually. Yeah, yeah, okay. As far as like someone who's like damaged and vulnerable and has sort of found peace with the Nicolas Cage character. So okay. I, I, I loved all that stuff. I mean, Nicolas Cage 
Uh, oh. I thought he was good in the movie. I mean, he, Nic- Nicolas Cage is in two types of movies now. He's in the director red box movies that he does just because he has to pay off his back taxes. He's in like 20 of those a year. And then he's in a couple like smaller films made by people that want to utilize him in an interesting way. Because he is a good actor. Oh yeah. But he's just crazy and he has crazy instincts. And I think he has to work with the right filmmaker that can kind of like sculpt that and use it appropriately. I think I really don't know what to think of his performance because his his real life personality kind of overshadows it. I, I, I saw a picture of him at the, I don't know if it was like the LA premiere of this movie or some sort of screening. And he's wearing like sunglasses indoors and like a gold jacket. <laughs> I mean, there's that scene when he comes into the bathroom and he has a tiger shirt on and he's in underwear. And no he's pants. screaming and drinking vodka and pouring it all over his wounds and... Just shouting. I love that scene, actually. That's obviously right after... I, I don't think it's a spoiler. It's a revenge movie. It's a spoiler that yeah. uh, Mandy gets killed by the cult. Um, but yeah, I loved that scene because it's like it starts out just super far away at the other side of the bathroom. With a super wide angle lens on. Yeah, and it's almost like... like I've never felt apprehension from a camera operator more. Right, right. Like, it looks like like when they were filming it, they didn't know what he was going to do because, like, the camera starts to go in and then backs up for a minute. I noticed um, that. There's a little, like, kind of motion where it's, it's like... It's like hesitation uh, where yeah. they're like, is he going to, like, is he going to start throwing things at me? It, it reminded um, me of that scene in Apocalypse Now with Martin Sheen. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. punches the mirror and it's, like, really bleeding. <laughs> where and, they just actually got him drunk. Marty, uh, yeah, keep going. It reminded me a lot of that because it, it, you had this feeling that the actor was more in control. Yeah. And it wasn't so staged and, you know, it was just like, who even knows if Nicolas Cage was really drunk or on LSD. Yeah. Or, or you know. Or snorting a giant pile yeah. of coke off of a broken piece of glass. Yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's stuff like that. So, and then, and then you have that, like, gritty, I, I don't know if this was shot on film for real. I assume it was. I, I don't pretty, think it was. I think it's okay. digital, and then they just well, did some filtering. Well, it had the look of film, yeah. the grain, and, like, weird exposures. And I think a lot of it was manipulated later, because there's a part where they're laying in the bed. Yeah. And you can see sort of, like, a weird matte line around them that's a different color and then they they kind of become changing the exposure changes on them and not you know and you could tell like it was done later in post but i don't know it it doesn't really matter it just had that that gritty feel of like like a movie where everyone who was making it was on drugs (laughs) (laughs) you think you're so in love I'll show you love. Did you feel, I watched it twice. Um, The first time I watched it, I kind of felt a slight disconnect between the first half and the second. Oh yeah, it was Uh, a total change. Cause well, and that sort of like, cause I really liked the movie the first time I saw it, but I watched it again and it it clicked for me a lot more the second time. Cause the first time I was watching through and it's like, it's very kind of slow and methodically paced and spends a lot of time just lingering with those two characters and then Cult shows up, they kill her, and then right after she's dead, it's like that's when the craziness starts happening. Mm-hmm. That all the stuff you see in the trailer it gets so crazy. There's chainsaw fights and demons and all that stuff. Uh, Nicolas Cage uh, lights a cigarette off of a flaming severed head. And so I was like, eh, it's getting, I mean, it's still like, it's executed almost like it's taking itself seriously, but it's still very goofy. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of felt like the first half was more grounded still stylish but grounded yeah 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 um yeah um, oh i i agree with you um because i was like oh this is a different movie now yeah and and i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing with this i think just all bets are off well you, you when, either like it or you don't i suppose but i mean the second time i watched it i felt more you have star trek i have david lynch okay uh, but i mentioned david lynch in the sense not necessarily stylistically but in, in terms of it reminded me of twin peaks and laura palmer now laura palmer dies but her kind of essence informs everything else that happens. Uh, She kind of lingers over the rest of the show. And I got that from this, especially the second time watching it. Like there's lots of imagery in the second half that looks like it's straight out of a heavy metal album cover. Uh, Uh, Nicolas Cage, yeah, there's animation that looks like the movie heavy metal. Nicolas Cage forges his own ax. But then I was thinking like in the first half, uh, Mandy is like constantly wearing like heavy metal shirts. She's reading fantasy novels, and there's there's like landscape shots that look right out of a fantasy world. 
And so it's like she, like her essence is just like lingering over the whole film, almost like it's kind of told from her perspective. Yeah, yeah. This sort of otherworldly perspective. And yeah. so that's 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 when, like I really liked the movie the first time, but I liked it so much more the second time. I can see that. I, I was trying to see if at the very end there's a shot where he's driving away. I think he's driving towards camera and there's like a pan up or whatever. Yeah. And, and I was trying to see if that was Jupiter. I assume so. They have that discussion yeah. early on about what's your favorite planet, Jupiter. Right. So I, I would have to look into it, but I was guessing. I think it's like two planets. It's a couple. So yeah. It's, it's, I'm assuming it's the two they mentioned, but yeah. But well, I was curious about the Jupiter thing too. I was like, I bet there's some sort of astrological significance to Jupiter, and that's what they're referencing. Yeah. Um, so I looked it up, and it is. Yeah, it's like Jupiter is. Uh, conducive to like creativity and having a more open mind and higher yeah. intellect about certain things, okay. kind of like what the cult leader wants to be, mm. you know. But he's just fueled completely by ego. <laughs> he's a complete fraud. This is a great scene where she's on hallucinogens and he's like talking about how how much uh, how he's been touched by God and he's like playing his album yes. and he's like it's like the Carpenters but better. And then, of course, he whips out his dick, and she just starts laughing at him. It's yeah. so great. Like, you, you, you have your own song about you? <laughs> <laughs> that moment, there's that scene where he goes to visit uh, Bill Duke and, and to get his crossbow. Yes. And it's like, the, the first half is so, like, ethereal and, and, and quiet and strange, and then it's just, like, hard cut. Yeah. And he's there, and he's like, he's like yes, I'm... Fucking Jesus freaks, <laughs> came, and I'm like, hmm. It's a totally different film now. Yeah. Like Nicholas Cage is speaking. It's not so dreamlike, and well, now he's just driven by pure rage. Now, and then, and then it's just like, and then it kind of gets silly, and you got those the the Marilyn Manson, uh, the what are they called in um, uh, Xenobites? No, Ceno, uh, Cenobites, Cenobites, Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is funny too, because they show up and. They, they're they called on by a horn yeah. that they call the Horn of Abraxas, and I'm wondering if that's a reference to the Jesse Ventura movie. Do you want to sit up here with me and tell you a story? It's about two men. Well, speaking um, of references, we got to talk about what was on the TV. Yes, this is the most important thing in any movie this year. Uh, Mandy and Nicolas Cage are watching Night Beasts. Mm. Uh, shout out to, to our boy Don Doler. <laughs> I love that they're watching it so like intently too. It's right. not, it's like some corny B movie, but they're like super into it. Yeah, and uh, Cheddar Goblin. We we gotta talk about we gotta talk about Cheddar Goblin. Now it's the funniest thing I've maybe seen in a movie all year. So Cheddar Goblin, I guess I found out after the fact, was directed by the Too Many Cooks guy. It takes a lot to make us do. Yeah, and it plays at the most inappropriate time. I, I loved that, in, though. Star standing there staring at it. I mean, this is immediately after she's killed, and it yeah. lingers so much on that. And he's, like, looking at her ashes, and it's still in the shape of her face, and then it blows away. Like, it's really, it's really haunting. But it's a nice kind of, like, and then he comes home, and that stupid Cheddar Goblin commercial is on. And it's like, I don't know, it's like, commenting on how, like, the universe doesn't care about your problems. It's like in real life, if you find out, you know, someone you care about died and then walking on sunshine comes on the radio, mm -hmm, it's like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Like, yeah. Things exist outside of that. So I thought that was great. And then right after that's the bathroom freak out. Yes. And then there's the, I, I couldn't help but think of Neil Breen when the tiger showed up and then, <laughs> then the guy lets the tiger out. And and it's like it's like uh, growling at the at the moon and it's, it's like <laughs> clearly green screened in yeah, with the moon behind just, it. Uh, Neil Breen popped in my head. <laughs> but you know, then there's there's a real life tiger and obviously there's a tiger on his shirt and so there's there's a lot of like a lot of creativity going on here. I mean, this is this is one of the more fascinating movies I've seen. In a long time, oh sure, where you're just like kind of mesmerized by it, uh, but also, you know, I looked at some of the like the critical reviews are great because critics appreciate film, they appreciate, uh, you know, technique, technique, uh, uh, all the things in this movie. You know, like I said, after watching lots of tags. What, what the fuck is Tag? I don't even know what this is. Tag is, one, uh, is another failed Jason Bateman comedy. Oh my god, oh, wait, really? Is he even in that? <laughs> no, he's not in that. Okay. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, 
critics have to sit through a lot of that. And then you get to some kind of like thing like this that's just like visionary and yeah. beautiful and different and like stunning in so many ways and then and then also so, so like it's still weird and gory all these like <laughs> bizarre choices that you just you don't even think of yeah like you yeah, i'm gonna make a revenge movie okay you know i think he gets his crossbow and he's gonna you know, hi. who who pictured him forging some kind of bizarre <laughs> axe you know like wh where does this come from yeah um, so, you know, you still want to be surprised when you watch movies. You still want to be, like, challenged. Mm -hmm. um, but, oh, my point was, was I was looking at the reviews, and it's, like, five star, five star, one star, five star, five. That's one, it. Worst thing I've ever fucking seen in my whole life. Yeah. Clearly a, that type a, of movie. a polarizing movie. Yes. Oh, man. They wronged you. <laughs> well, Jay, you like... Like the filmmaker, Panos Cosmos. Panos Cosmatos, which is like when you see his movies, you say, of course his name would be Panos Cosmatos. I don't know what the hell he is. I know his dad was a director. His dad directed like Tombstone and Cobra was Stallone. Oh, so, okay. Slightly different types of movies yeah. than, than these, yeah. I, 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 thought, I first thought for sure he was, he was Greek with the name like Panos Cosmatos. I don't know. If you, if you Google him, you look at a picture of him, he just looks like any average Star Wars fan. This guy, I, I hear he's directing Ant-Man and the Wasp too. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe, maybe That's then. the formula. You make one or two small budget movies and then you get scooped up to make uh, whatever the next Predator movie is going to be. I think he's doing the, the reboot of the live action Scooby-Doo movie. Oh, oh yeah. okay. That's a great choice. Yeah, yeah. They, they picked Panos Cosmatos. Mm -hmm. and, and Nicolas Cage is going to play Scooby-Doo. Right. He'll yeah. do the voice. He'll do the voice. It's no, gonna, it's going to be him. Oh, just him? Just, just with little ears. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a... It's just gonna get weird. He's, they're, they're gonna fire him over creative differences. <laughs> and the Scooby Doo eats everyone. No, they're not gonna fire him over creative differences because this won't be made by Disney. Uh, but you, he made a film called Beyond the Black Rainbow. Yes. Which was about the uh, when they shot The Wizard of Oz with the Munchkins running amok in a hotel. With Chevy Chase, yeah. Yeah, yeah and Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher. Hmm? Am I getting the, that right? I think that's it, yeah. It's a very funny film. Give me my fucking it's very yeah. respectful of little people. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't treat them like horrible monsters at all. Uh, but you, did you like this film better or worse than Beyond the Black Rainbow? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I liked them both a lot. I, I've, I've obviously had more time to kind of process Beyond the Black Rainbow. It came out eight years ago. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I, he's two for two as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I loved both both of his movies. No, I figured you would because you're weird. And and uh, I had high expectations for it because the trailer was great and because I liked the director so much and I would say it, it exceeded my expectations. I actually liked it a lot more. I, I was expecting the craziness, the weird uh, demon fights and whatnot, uh, but I, it was actually much more kind of emotionally resonant than I was expecting mm. with the relationship of Mandy and how she sort of haunts the entire film. Like yeah. That's the stuff that really, it, it, out of all the movies you could say that this felt like it was influenced by. The one that reminded me the most of was The Crow, uh, as far as it's like a kind of a revenge action movie, but there's this just kind of underlying sadness through the whole thing. For, for a while, I thought there was going to be a little bit of a plot twist, because they, they, early on, they, they, there's a wonderful scene where the bald man and then several of the, the cult members are in a van, and they stop, and that's when they, they summon the demons, or whoever well no they, bill duke explains that they're just bikers that had bad lsd and it fucked up their brains forever so, so they would have wear <laughs> costumes yeah um yeah but they he, they summon them and he, he gives them a jar and he drinks it which we later find out is some kind of hallucinogenic drug. yes uh and then they, they they're like we want more they, they say something and they're like sacrifice the fat kid yeah when they when they kill mandy and they she's in like a bag and so I thought my, it might have been a switcheroo. Uh, it might not have been her in the bag. It might have mm. been another cult member. Because why not show uh, the horror of her being killed? Yeah. Why conceal it in a bag? And I, so I thought, oh, maybe she's still alive. And maybe there's going to be some kind of twist at the end or something. Mm. And then, no. It's, she just uh, offs them one at a time. It's pretty straightforward. I will say... Uh, it would have been nice to have one sort of kink in the story at some right. point. Right, yeah. Because it is pretty straightforward. He has like a little, they deviate a little bit where he goes to visit the guy that makes the acid. 
and that's like kind of the only break from murdering people. So yeah. some sort of little twist along the way. It's obviously it's not a completely story driven movie, yeah. but you could you 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 could do you could say thin on plot. Yeah, yeah I mean, which is fine, but uh, some little kink along the way I think would have helped it a little bit. Yeah. Well, the the hard question now is: Do you recommend uh, Mandy? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you already summed it up in that it's a five star movie or it's a one star movie. Um, yes. It's not for, if you let, if you don't like kind of very slowly paced movies that are more kind of hypnotic and you know if you're just waiting for the next story beat like no. Right, right, right. But I think the people that watch us are into movies and want to see creative different things and mm -hmm. it doesn't get much better than this as far as I'm concerned. If you're a fan of cinema, as I always say, yeah. Don't recommend it to grandma. <laughs> Grandma's not going to like this. Um, it's a revenge picture. Like a, like the westerns, like like John Wayne, getting back at the engines. <laughs> no no no, Grandma, it's a little different. Uh, so yeah, this is really for cinephiles and people that like like weird things, like you. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm like a I'm like a hybrid. I'm a person that likes a good story, and I like my my characters grounded in reality. It's not Mom's Night Out. <laughs> Although, Panos has been tapped to direct Mom's Night Out 2. Oh no! You exceed the cosmic darkness. Well, Mike, what else did we see this week? Something that's equally as artistically ambitious. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, Not tag. The Predator. Although Panos Cosmotos is also tagged to tag the tag remake. He is. They're remaking <laughs> They're tag. remaking it already. <laughs> that was so poorly worded. We're leaving it in. Oh, we saw the Predator. Hey, we have a word. Let me guess. He's done something crazy. Remember RoboCop 2014? Remember Total Recall 2012? Remember The Terminator, Salvation, and Genesis? Oh, that was just an unrelated sentence. It has nothing to do with what follows. It's time for the soft slash hard reboot of Predator called, get ready, The Predator! We thought we were in good hands with Shane Black behind the wheel, but it turns out he was drunk. Also, the car had no steering wheel or brakes. In the sequel slash reboot, predators are coming and going to Earth with a mission of not being predators. Remember the predator? So, Jay, what did you think of the predator? I mean, predator, pred predator. Oh, are we talking about that actor that got cut out of the movie? No, I just misspoke. I oh, just, I oh. just said, I said predator. Uh, that's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It just came out funny. Mm. So did this movie. <laughs> Well, little known fact, this is a technological breakthrough. It's a new technique being used in movies, which is that uh, this entire film was edited with a weed whacker. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's start off with some positives. Uh, it won't take long. Okay. Uh, it, it tried to be different from the other Predator movies? Yes. I'm getting uh, higher pitched as I talk? That, that, is, that is a positive uh, as far as... Uh, rebooting of the series, I guess? Trying to create, I don't know, our cinematic universe is still a thing? Yes. Okay. They, well, they I, keep trying to be a thing. Yeah. The only one that hasn't failed horribly has been Marvel, but. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think everyone's failed at it. Every single one. And Star Wars. Or no, the Conjuring movies. I guess those do oh, pretty well. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Conjuring um, universe. Star Wars is stumbling, but it's trying. Yeah. Um, but then this, yeah, this has a sequel lead in, so clearly they're trying to re reboot the, the Predator idea. But um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, special Ops guys in, in the jungle. No, it and wasn't Predators, the Robert Rodriguez produced movie. That was a good movie. It was, but that I like that movie. <laughs> well, that, that movie captures the spirit of the original Predator, yeah. certainly more than this one does. This movie's a farce, but uh, that's a, that's like a hard case of soft reboot, mm -hmm. that Predators movie, because oh, yeah. it is a bunch of people wandering around the jungle fighting Predator. There's a little twist that they're on a different planet, but yeah. it still feels very much like the same type of movie. Yeah, I suppose that so, would be the reboot, And I, I, yeah. I like Predators too, but this one, it like at least it's trying to go in a different direction. Right. So it's trying to do five different Predator plots in one movie. It feels like five different movies, but there's things like the first Predator that crash lands and they've got him like 
tied down in that science research facility and it breaks out and like just seeing it casually walk around the hallways of this place and start killing people is kind of fun. Yeah. Even though when you find out why he's on Earth, it makes absolutely no sense because he's trying to save us. Oh, he's here to save us from global warming. He's here to, well, he's here to save us from the predators that want to wipe us out because of global warming. Yeah. I, I don't even know where to it's a fucking start mess. here. Um, <laughs> well, this is, this is written and directed by Shane Black. Shane Black and Fred Decker, who oh, they, they pulled out of a closet Fred and dusted Decker. him off. He hasn't done anything in 25 years. He worked on Star Trek Enterprise, Jay. That was, I think, the last thing he did. He directed, uh, with Shane Black, he wrote uh, Monster Squad and directed Monster Squad way back when. Childhood favorite of mine. But then he also wrote and directed Night of the Creeps, Wait which I minute. love. Wait a minute. I'm thinking about something. Do you think these two old school guys looked at the landscape of movies today and said, wow, the most shitty things make tons of money? <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> World's yeah. Transformers. Do you think they said, since they're funny guys, mm -hmm. do you think they said, let's write the worst script we can, make the messiest, most terrible movie, and see if it gets to a billion dollars worldwide? Like just as a joke amongst as, themselves? Yes, <laughs> that's the only answer. I, I think... Uh, that's the only answer. I don't because know. Because this, this movie, I said after we watched it, I said it was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I know that I say that a lot. But I may have meant it this time. Uh, it's not that bad, but it's a mess. And uh, uh, I guess you apparently weren't familiar. They did reshoots. I, yeah, I did. Um, about which that. isn't a big deal. Like every big movie has reshoots now, and they always say like reshoots is the movie in trouble. Blah blah blah. But this is a case where I think yeah, the movie was in trouble, so they did reshoots and they made it worse. Um, what did they reshoot? Do you know? I, I don't know exactly. I know the third act in the original version had uh, there was a revelation that there was in Area Fifty Two we had predators that are like good guy predators. They're like our allies. Okay. Because there's like some behind the scenes uh, photos of like our, our ragtag team in like a, a tank with predators on it. And so we team up with the predators to stop the mutant predator. And so the studio said, you can't do that. Instead, have them run around the woods and we'll cut it so quick that you can't tell what the fuck is happening. Oh God, that's right. Yeah. They At, at some point they said, we haven't had people being hunted in the woods. Yeah. And that's what people know. Yes. And then all of a sudden they just, oh, that was such a clusterfuck. It's so, well, okay, spoilers. Yeah, we have our group of, of uh, uh, like, PTSD vets that are our are, are heroes through the whole movie, and then we get to the scene in the woods at the end, and just one after the other, they all get killed. <laughs> Like, yeah. just all of a sudden. Because that's what happened in the first Predator. Did you even know? I had to look it up online afterwards because I wasn't sure if this is what happened or not. Did you realize that Sterling K. Brown died in that scene? It happens so quick. No. He apparently, well, that's, I wasn't sure if it happened or not. So I looked it up after, afterwards to find out because he's got, you know, the Predator cannon on his shoulder. Oh, he like, had turned and shot himself in the uh, head. It yeah. happens so fast. Right. But yeah, he turns and then he, I guess, shoots his head off. I wonder if they cut it down, it was too gory or something. But yeah, Jacob Tremblay earlier on is like, he asked him how to use it. Yeah. He's like, he's like, it senses danger and just fires. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a really sophisticated weapon that an alien would use. <laughs> something that just thinks for itself. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. But then yeah, <laughs> I guess the weapon sense that Sterling K. Brown was a danger to something and it shot him in the head. Yeah. This um, happens in less than a second. Yeah, this is this is a mess. Uh, well, this movie doesn't know how autism works or how like PTSD works or how Tourette's syndrome works. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, it's like a it's like <laughs> the 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 notion of Tourette's being only swears. Yeah. Like cock shit, motherfucker, cocksucker. Like that's like and not what just you that, think, but like you like, think of that when you're in like sixth grade right. when you make jokes about Tourette's. Yeah. It's not that. It's like what or that when you say those things, you're like angry. Yeah, yes. Every, it's Thomas Jane who, like, he should have been the lead of this movie because he's got some more presence than whoever this lead guy is. But yeah, he's got Tourette's syndrome and it's almost exclusively used as a punchline, like when they don't know how to end a scene. I have Thomas Jane swear. It, it's incredibly unfunny. Mm -hmm. and, and the writing feels super dated. Mm -hmm. and, and for a minute, just a minute, I was watching it and, and the guys are all being like, 
they're all swearing and, you know, kind of uh, Keegan-Michael Key is in it, which... Whenever he was on screen, all I was thinking was how he was, like, leaning back on his seat and just being like, my buddy won an Oscar. <laughs> and I'm here. Uh, well, whenever he was on screen, to me, all I kept thinking of was, you know, in, like, the MTV Movie Awards or, like, the Oscars when they would they would take, like, the real footage of movies? Yes. And, and kind of insert their own like jokey stuff. Billy Crystal shows up. Yes, yes. And they, they reshoot <laughs> segments. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you. And this from a guy in a nine hour movie. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Whenever I see Keegan Michael Key on, on screen, I kept thinking like him in the original Predator. Look out guys, <laughs> you know, like as part of a skit. Whatever it is out there, he killed Hopper. And now it wants us. Bitch, are you for real? A little out of place in this. And, and then, so you got the, the ragtag group of guys who are all army guys, but they all have their own quirks. Yeah. And they're all saying, like, uh, f fucking obnoxious and offensive things that normally I would just be, like, okay with. I wouldn't care. But then after a while, it started to grate on me to, to the point of like, this is dumber than like a Transformers movie even, yeah. where it felt like the script was written by like a 13 year old boy. Cause yeah, cause there's so much, and this isn't the type of thing we normally complain about either, but there's so much swearing, like just randomly inserted fucks throughout the movie, well, like, the, the, like excessively where it's like, what, what are we doing? Yeah, well, the worst thing was, was like, okay, yeah, I get it with, with guys who have PTSD or some kind of crazy mental problems. Um, but then it cuts to Sterling K. Brown. That's not a predator, that's a sports hunter. Well, we took a vote, predator's cooler, right? <laughs> fuck yeah. And he's like the, the guy in charge of this like alien operation, and he's like, say, fuck, fuck Yeah, that. fuck yeah. And then like one of the scientists is like, fuck yeah, motherfucker, <laughs> and they go like this, and they fist bump. Yeah. And they go, <laughs> and I'm like, What's happening? Yeah. Why is this happening? It, it was, I'd be okay with them turning the predator into a farce if it was like oh, well done. Yeah. But this is just so poorly executed. If it's like it wasn't witty, funny, like no, which was surprising for Shane Black. I yeah. Mean, he's usually so good with like characters and funny dialogue between characters, and there's a few moments with the group of guys where they had some funny stuff back and forth. Uh, a couple parts when they were in the hotel room, uh, they had Olivia Munn. She would like wake yeah, wakes up. Yeah, it was like a glimmer. There's a couple it's parts there, and then when they go to the main guy's house with his wife there, and they're like hanging out in the living room. Right. There's a couple funny moments there, but that's yeah. about it. Do you remember? Do you remember the part when the one character said, y "You're a, f a fucking retard," and then one of them said. The main guy said, yeah, maybe you choose a different word next time. He's like, yeah, don't say retarded, man. His fucking kid's retarded. Yeah. And I'm not one of those people that, that goes, ooh, you know, don't ooh. say that word. I, like, if it says, if it's said in a movie, you know, especially a dated movie, like a movie that takes place in the 90s, or the 80s, when kind of kids talk like that more often. Yeah. And they say that, and I'm like, okay, it's in context. Or, it's fine, if, it, or if it's at least, like, funny. I mean, it just felt like, because these are the characters you're supposed to like, and they're all like idiots. It felt like uh, there's a great use of the word in being John Malkovich. Excuse me. Are you John Malkovich? Yes, I am. Wow. You're really uh, great in that movie. Oh. When you play that retard. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I have a cousin who's a retard. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so, um, as you might imagine, it means a lot to me to see retards. <laughs> portrayed uh, on the silver screen so compassionately. Well, thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. And that was funny because it's like, oh, this dumb guy's interrupting yeah, yeah, his yeah. dinner. Yes. Context. Con context. Context. You can make things funny in context. Well, yeah, instead of being a clever, witty movie that might have been a little raunchy, mm. it felt like a movie that was written by, like, dude bros and a frat. Yeah. And, and, and I was really surprised by that. Mm. Like, and, and let's talk about our female characters now. Oh, sure. They introduce Olivia Munn as um, scientist, biologist. Yeah. Well, they don't uh, introduce her. They just cut to her in a oh, shot yeah. because they had to cut out the sex predator from the film. We're introduced to Olivia Munn. The, the, the government shows up and they, she's just like in a park and we don't know what's happening. And then they're like, we'll watch your dog for you. Yeah. And like, oh, she has a dog? Yes, like, we don't know what's right. happening. It happened so fast. But, what, but the, the opening of that scene was, yeah, the uh, Shane Black's uh, uh, friend was there hitting on her. Careful. 
Uh, he's, well, he was, he's a registered sex offender. Okay. He's not uh, an actual Okay. He was just he... wanted to be a Okay, <laughs> that, uh, well, I don't know what happened. I just don't want to pull an Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they cut out the whole first yes. half of that scene, so Olivia Munn just shows up, and you're like, oh, I guess she's the character now. Yes, and Olivia Munn... And her having a dog has nothing to do with anything. I guess she kind of trains the predator dog later, which is stupid. Oh. They sort of domesticate it by shooting it in the brain, and then it's not evil anymore. I, I, uh, is that what's supposed to happen there? I don't... Yeah, I think it was so injured that it... I don't know. I don't even want to think about it. Uh, <laughs> my point was, yes. Olivia Munn is, is introduced as a uh, uh, lady uh, biologist who, who may or may not specialize in like exobiology, like alien life, or, or she's so good at biology, the government has her on retainer to call her up in the event an ET shows up. Mm -hmm. So they give her the call and she shows up and they take her in and they show her the predator in the lab and and you kind of think, okay, lady's a biologist. The predator breaks out and starts murdering everyone. Yes. Everyone but her. Mm. And you'd think she would just run the fuck out of there. <laughs> but instead she's like, she gets a, like a dart gun, like a, a tranquilizing gun and, and is like, like going around doing like SWAT moves. She's and, running a, on the roof and then jumps off of the roof onto a moving onto bus. Onto a moving bus. And yeah, and then... Because she wants to get the Predator. She, I, I understand like like it shouldn't get out right. of the lab, but it's not really her responsibility at that point. Plus also, I don't want to judge someone on their occupation, but a biologist might not be the best at like military tactics and jumping from <laughs> roofs, rooftop to rooftop. Well, and then later, uh, she grabs a shotgun and, and is like, yeah. like, I ain't never even picked up a shotgun. <laughs> like, I'd be like, you know, you know what I mean? And then, so I thought at some point he was going to say, like, where'd you train? You know? Yeah. Turns out she has some backstory. Turns out she has a military background before, and then she got into the military wing of biology. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, I served in, uh, you know, the, I served in Afghanistan for five years and then I got into biology and then I started and got my PhD after that. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, maybe that was cut out. Who knows? But, or it's just like do all character. Yeah. And then it's, it's, it's my rant on the strong female character <laughs> that, that flips while a bus is, is turning and exploding. Yeah. It's not a strong female character. And, it's a character that can do anything all the time. Yeah, and, and there's no reason. You don't, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because uh, you don't want, if you have a damsel in distress, people will say you're being sexist because she's just a damsel in distress. But if she can suddenly hold her own the same as trained soldiers, yeah. then it's also a bad thing because you're, it's almost like you're being condescending. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, just because she's a girl, she could do all the things that the men can do. <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's this weird gray area where her character should not have been jumping on the roof of a bus. Right. It just felt weird. And not, not saying that she should have been the love interest slash damsel in distress, yeah. But her, I ever use her, her knowledge of biology to, that the other guys don't have. And like, they did occasionally in the film, but it just seemed like so ridiculous. Yeah. Predator is like one of those franchises that uh, works on that simple, 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 simple level. Like well, Halloween. Yeah, Halloween is the best example. Jaws is another example. The story is told. It's very yeah, simple. This is it, it. The Terminator. Although, yeah. you know, T2 expanded a little bit. You can make good sequels out of these things, you, but... You, you can. You, you, one, you don't necessarily need to. And two, you've got to keep it kind of, you know, don't get too crazy with everything. Right, right, right. Um, I mean, the right person could write it and expand the Predator universe. There's been comic books and shit for decades of people doing that yeah. type of stuff. And there's those know. Alien versus Predator movies and... And what a waste of having it set on Halloween too. You could add some fun stuff with the Predator walking around during trick-or-treating. Yeah. They didn't do anything with that. They had one scene where Jacob Tremblay accidentally murdered somebody because he was wearing the mask. And that was it. It's just too, too violent. <laughs> 
Well, it is a predator. The original movie is pretty violent. Yeah, but it was there to hunt. Yeah. And oh yeah, no. Here it's just like a like a slasher villain. Right. Yeah. Well, yes, exactly. And it's a, it's like if if you introduce Jason Voorhees, but Jason Voorhees is there to save the human race <laughs> by giving our government secret uh, uh, technology. Yeah. But and you don't all, explain why he's doing that. Yeah, no. No well, explanation as to why. Jason Voorhees is there. He goes up to, to, to the U.S. Capitol, <laughs> and he has a, a technology. But while he's giving the technology, he's just slashing people with the butcher knife. Yeah. Or an axe, I mean. Right. Oh, they use Jacob Tremblay, right, to... Uh, access the interior of the Predator ship. I wanted to mention this. Okay. Uh, because he, he has autism. And uh, because he studied the Predator technology in his basement, he's able to use like 3D like glowing red buttons and he opened the door. Yeah. And so they're, okay, let us into the ship, Jacob Tremblay. <laughs> um, but anyway, his, his dad, our lead hero character, and a couple of the military guys are f jumping around on the roof of the spaceship as it's flying off. Yes. And uh, uh, they're like, Predator is activating a shield. And the shield is going super slow. <laughs> Our hero gets trapped under the shield. Uh, his friend, he's, he's injured, so he's going to kill himself by jumping in, into, <laughs> he jumps into, the engine. In, into the engine. But also, while he's flying into the engine, he's shooting his gun. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's constant everyone's shooting their gun so much it, it, I, I thought of that Simpsons episode where Homer gets a gun can you help me get my ball down from the roof dad sure thing honey and and he's like using it to shut off the light and he's just like shooting every you turn off the TV by shooting his gun at it um, and, and so I, I laughed out loud then. When Do you think he, that whole ending could have, because I, that whole ending, I believe, was reshot. That was a, a additional shooting. Do you think that whole thing could have been done by Shane Black, like, sarcastically? Maybe. Like, you want, the, the you want this to be was. more, like, audience-friendly? Yeah. Here. Here. Yeah. And he makes, like, the stupidest shit ever. It's yeah, possible. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he flies into the engine, but also shoots his gun <laughs> at the same time. And instead of, like, like, a dramatic moment, you know, where he... he he fell into the engine, yeah. like where. Oh no! Instead, it's a farce. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, so so hero is inside the shield, between the shield and the spaceship, and he slides around. He's trying to rescue his son who's on board. Yeah. Because the predators want to take him back to their home planet. So they can use his autism to make super predators. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, <laughs> like, and that's uh, a thing I just said that actually happens in yeah, the movie. Yeah, it does. And uh, our hero then needs to get inside the ship. So the same control panel appears, and he goes beep, 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 and gets inside the ship. How the fuck did he know how to do that? If, if Jacob Tremblay was so important that yeah, he's Sterling, the only one that can do it. Sterling K. Brown brought him up to the ship. He couldn't figure it out. Nobody could. No. But I guess our hero maybe maybe they had a shot of him like looking through like binoculars as knows. he did it. You know, and then of course he remembers from a hundred feet away <laughs> exactly the the sequence of of alien characters yeah. and glowing red 3D like that Jacob Tremblay did. This is, it's all edited so quick. It all happens so fast. You're not supposed to think about it. It just happens. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking that they wrote this movie as a joke. Yeah. Like, let's come up with the stupidest thing ever. This is the crew. You want to kill him? Oh, yeah. That's going to save our asses. I, I'm so tired of these, like, properties. Yeah. They, they just need, they need new, new ideas. I mean, that, that's why uh, Mandy was, was good, you know. But I mean, like, as far as sci-fi action well, that's, films, Yeah, that's obviously a different audience. It's a different kind of movie. If you're talking yeah, about yeah. big, like, studio movies, yeah. They, they need that, that, and Alien is another one. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, Cameron did Aliens, and that was a good sequel. Yeah. Um, but Alien, that concept of there's a weird alien on your ship, and, or the Terminator. Something has come back from the future. Like that, that really simple premise. They don't seem to do those anymore or even attempt them. Yeah. Because where it's, it's like the, the concept is what sells the movie. The concept, not, not, yeah. the, not the IP or the star. Right. A shark in the water, a robot sent back from the future, an alien aboard your cargo ship, uh, and a predator in the woods hunting down a, a, a group of uh, soldiers, yeah. right? 
Uh, uh, simple, simple concepts executed well. Everything needs to be big and grand and have five different plot threads going on with 16 different characters and spaceships exploding and this, that, that. And you have to set up the sequels. Yeah, because I think they, they think that the audience, when they go to see a movie, uh, oh, is that all it is? is? Is just, you know, eight guys in the woods yeah. the whole time? Oh no, no, they go to six other planets. Look, look what and happened with Dread. That movie came out and it flopped horribly because it's just Dread in an apartment complex. Yeah, and that was... <laughs> and that's a, a wonderful movie. Fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's been proven now. The audiences are dumber. They expect bigger, louder, more set pieces, more explosions, well, more I think, things. Well, I think people expect that because that's what they keep getting. And we keep getting that because a couple movies have done it successfully. That's true. Everybody's that's true. trying to replicate the Marvel formula because Marvel did it well. So we got to do that too. Yeah, it's yeah, like, just yeah. make a good movie and deal with uh, sequels and crap if the first movie is successful and works. Right, uh, right. Yeah, it just, it feels like they're, every movie is to try and top the next one as far as like just big stuff happening. And, and this is a perfect example of too much going on and yeah. too messy and too sloppy. And they could have made The Predator a reboot yeah. about a predator coming to Earth and, you know, maybe change up the location a little, add a little bit in, but don't go hog wild. Yeah. But you could still have the busload of, of weirdo vets, and that's the movie, is them trying to, you know, get the predator or whatever. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's your movie. Right. Tone it down. It's just a nightmare. It's a headache inducing. Yeah. And so I hope this fucking flops. <laughs> word of mouth, word of mouth will kill something. Mm -hmm. Kill it faster and more efficient than the predator. That was supposed to supposed to be your cue to roll the credits. Oh. Kill it faster and more efficient than the Predator. That was your cue to roll the credits. Oh! I was saying word of mouth will kill it faster and more efficient than the Predator. Oh, I didn't do it again, did I? I, I.